In this video, you'll learn the basic assembly steps for light form ICF insulated concrete forms. This assembly pamphlet has more details and it was included with your forms. If you have any questions, please contact your Lightform ICF supplier or Lightform Technologies. For most projects, you'll need some basic carpentry hand tools, a tape measure, level, hammer, and bolt cutter, a bag of 24 inch zip ties, a utility knife, a snap line, and a coarse tooth hand saw. Power tools should include a variable speed screwdriver drill and saw. You'll also need good quality expandable foam glue, glue gun, and cleaner, as well as three inch and four inch coarse threaded drywall screws and an inventory of plastic washers like these. Have an inventory of good quality wood two x fours for braces and two inch lumber for bulkheads at the doors and windows. The basic parts of your Lightform ICF inventory include these folded pre-assembled blocks. They're installed with the male castellations on top. Each block has reference marks every two inches and a special mark every six inches to show where a concealed furring strip and spacer tie is located. 90 degree corner blocks are used to form 90 degree corners within the project. The design may be different for other wall widths. Your Lightform ICF inventory might include special items like these 16 foot lengths of in-wall bracing. These 16 foot lengths of steel in-wall bracing help keep your assembled form straight from corner to corner. Or this pre-assembled brick ledge block. You may also be using scaffold brackets like this to brace the forms and provide a work platform. The building inspection department for your city or county have codes and regulations for all kinds of buildings. Before you begin, get some tips from a building pro and contact your local inspection department to learn what codes apply to insulated concrete forms and reinforced concrete. To get an accurate job, the concrete footing or pad must be level and wide enough for the forms at least four inches wider than the concrete wall. If vertical reinforcing steel is required, cast 24 inch lengths into the footing or pad so they extend out of the concrete about 16 inches. Spacing will be dictated by local building codes. Place two inch pieces of three inch PVC pipe over the rebar. They'll be used later to receive the vertical rebar. Snap a chalk line along one side of the project. It should be two and a half inches beyond the location of the concrete wall. Compact molded corners, wraparound corner ties, and zip ties are used to assemble 90 degree corners. These compact corner blocks come with two 24 inch zip ties that will be used to reinforce the common seam at each corner. Firmly anchor two 24 inch lengths of dimensional lumber to the footing or pad at the point of each corner. Start your project by applying foam glue to the bottom of a compact corner and set against the 2x4 studs. Apply foam glue to the bottom of the full blocks and slide them onto the compact corner using the tongue and groove. Place a corner tie onto the assembled corner and into the provided tie slots. After the corner tie is inserted and flush with the top of the block, punch a hole on the opposite side of the first tie on the adjoining block and run a zip tie through the hole and zip tie together. Repeat this step on the other side of the corner. You will do this for every row, including at the top of the wall. Assemble the first course of forms and glue them to the concrete footing or pad. At the center of a wall between corners, you may need to custom trim the last block and remove the tongue from the adjoining block. Glue the cut blocks together as you place them. Firmly press in-wall bracing into the form until it is seated on a row of spacer ties. Trim sections with a bolt cutter as needed. After the first course of forms have been placed and glued, 
Mark the locations for door bulkheads and the position of the exterior vertical form braces. Vertical form braces should be placed six to eight foot apart along rows of spacer ties. Wherever a vertical brace will be located, a 24 inch zip tie or wire is pressed through the form and wrapped around a top spacer tie and in wall bracing so the tie extends out like this. If the braces will also be used to support a work platform, braces should also be placed at the corners to support the platform. At the second course, to create staggered seams, simply cut a full block in half and use each half to start the next course. Apply foam glue to the top of the form and set your half blocks onto the first course, making sure the tongue and the grooves are lined up. Now slide the compact corner onto the two half blocks and place a corner tie flush to the top of the form. You will need to trim the tongue off the adjoining block and reinforce with foam glue. Once the wall is assembled to four feet, the outside vertical form braces should be firmly zip tied to the form. In this project, light form steel studs are being used. Braces must extend the full height of assembled wall to maintain proper alignment and protect the forms from wind damage. A light form scaffold bracket is being installed to receive the diagonal brace. An adjustable 2x4 diagonal brace is attached to each vertical brace using a 3 inch drywall screw. Diagonal braces must be anchored at the bottom of the form. In this project, an adjustable turnbuckle has been attached. Commercial turnbuckles allow for precise adjustments and can be purchased or rented. Use scaffold rated planks and anchor them securely to the brackets. Follow all OSHA guidelines for height limits and the construction of approved safety rails for work platforms. If the platform is not used, assembly can continue using a rolling scaffold or ladder. Continue assembly to full height, adding zip ties every 32 inches and anchoring the form to the exterior vertical braces. Reinforce all common seams with foam glue and or lumber. Place horizontal rebar as needed between the window and door openings. Install steel in-wall bracing along the top of the form. Install zip ties at the top row of spacer ties and anchor the vertical braces. Place vertical rebar by lowering it onto the PVC collars at the bottom of the wall. Rebar should stop approximately one inch short of the top of the assembled wall. To keep it from shifting, zip tie it to a spacer tie or the steel in wall brace. Bulkheads for doors and windows are constructed using dimensional lumber, which has been cut to fit the form cavity. A two x 10 plank was cut down for this eight inch concrete wall. Before anchoring, check to be sure the wood bulkheads are plumb and level. The forms are anchored to the jams and header bulkheads with 3 inch drywall screws and plastic washers placed every 8 inches. To secure the bulkhead to the concrete, 4 inch drywall screws are attached to the bulkhead material so they extend into the concrete cavity. For door openings, the jam bulkheads should be about a half inch short to allow the forms to settle during concrete placement. Bulkheads are temporarily braced with good quality 2x4 studs. Vertical bracing should be a maximum of 2 feet apart and horizontal bracing should be a maximum of 3 feet apart. Set aside the vertical bracing and wood bulkheads for window sills. They will be installed later during concrete placement. Now is the time to cut in the utility line blockouts through the form wall. Although it rarely happens, your concrete form may blow out or break during concrete placement. Breaks can be quickly repaired by having a blowout kit available before you order the concrete. 
Go through a quick checklist to be sure your project is ready for concrete. Is rebar in place and tied off? Are all window and door bulkheads braced? Are corners plumb from top to bottom? Are vertical braces zip tied to the forms? Does each vertical brace have a diagonal brace? Have utility holes been cut and temporarily blocked? Is a blowout kit handy? For most projects, concrete should be ordered with a design strength of 2,500 to 3,000 pounds per square inch, usually called a five bag mix. Smooth aggregate of half inch to three quarter inch is recommended. Order concrete with a four to six inch slump. Use this simple formula to estimate how much concrete you'll need. Concrete is typically placed with a concrete pump. To minimize the risk of form failure, the discharge pressure from the pump should be reduced with a double 90 degree elbows, a hose reducer, or a hose harness. Move around the form, filling it in four foot lifts or layers. In about 30 minutes, the concrete will support its own weight and another layer can be placed. For best results, Place a maximum of two lifts per hour. Concrete can be consolidated with a one inch internal vibrator. In this project, the upper walls will be wood framed. So J bolts are being placed to anchor the wood sill plate for the frame wall. For best results on basements or below grade projects, a good quality self-adhesive 60 mil waterproofing membrane is recommended. It should be applied from grade level down over the concrete footing. As an alternate, good quality liquid waterproofing can be placed by a certified applicator. To install electrical and plumbing services, follow local building codes for your type of project. Electrical and plumbing lines are usually concealed in the insulation by carving a pathway approximately one and a half inches deep with a saw, router, or hot knife, and items are anchored directly to the concrete. Stucco, ephus, and a variety of synthetic masonry finishes can be applied directly onto the insulation. For best results, the insulation surface should be roughened slightly and thoroughly brushed clean. Brick anchor straps, wood, and synthetic siding or drywall can be attached to Lightform ICF's concealed furring strips. Follow local building codes and manufacturer's instructions for proper attachments. We want your project to go smoothly, so if you have any installation questions, contact your Lightform ICF supplier or visit with one of our customer service specialists at Lightform Technologies.